إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My dear respected listeners I commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, these brothers gave some amazing speeches about Ibrahim alayhi salam, his life and times, some lessons we can derive from his life, uh, and even about Hajj and a brief history of, of all of this. So now let's transition over to the life of our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and focus on Hajj during his lifetime. Now, if we look through the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that the Prophet, uh, we see that Hajj was actually one of the uh, one of the latest commandments to be revealed. It was revealed towards the end of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life, and because of this, uh, we see that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only actually com uh, completed this pilgrimage one time after it became uh, compulsory. Now, from this, we can see exactly how significant this one Hajj must have been. Number one. Uh, it was in this Hajj that the Prophet ﷺ actually clarified all the jahili, the shirk practices that the, the kuffar added into this pilgrimage. It was in this Hajj that he, he uh, clarified the true way to, the true method of performing this Hajj, uh, the original method from the time of Ibrahim salam. It was in this Hajj that majority of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum actually became Sahaba because it was the, fir it was the first and last time the majority of them heard and saw the Prophet ﷺ. And it was in this Hajj that the Prophet ﷺ gave a series of speeches in which he gave some advice that if we are to hold on to it and implement in our lives, then no doubt we will attain success in this life and the hereafter. So the Prophet ﷺ in this Hajj actually gave three separate speeches on three separate days. Now instead of going through all three of these speeches separately, I'll just uh, gather some of the uh, points that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in them. But before I begin going into these points, I want, I want everyone to understand why these speeches are so significant. If we look through this, uh, the entire seerah of the Prophet وسلم, this is probably the largest audience that the Prophet وسلم, ever had. It was, uh, it's estimated that about 100,000 Sahaba came uh, to perform Hajj in this one gathering. So we know that the Prophet وسلم, would, uh, would convey what he thought is the most, were the most uh, important points that he could possibly give to these people and points that they can take back home with them and hold on to even after the demise of the Prophet So number one, the Prophet started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the first benefit that we can derive from his speech. Something as small as just taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name when uh, commencing an action can make a world of a difference. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu says, كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَالٍ لَا يُبْدَأُ فِيهِ بِالْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ أَقْطَعُ He says that any action that's uh, of, uh, of significance, of, that's of importance, that's not commenced with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's praise, then it's أَقْطَعُ What does أَقْطَعُ mean? It means it's deficient and it's lacking barakah. So whether it be eating, whether it be drinking, whether it be sleeping, whether it be going to school, or whether it be giving a speech, if we commence all of our actions with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then inshallah Allah will put barakah in our lives. The next point that the Prophet sallallahu uh, made was, uh, what he did was he asked the, the Sahaba a series of questions. Number one, he asked them, which month do you believe is the most sacred and the most holy? So they all replied, this month that we're in right now. Then he asked them, which land do you believe is the most sacred, the most holy? And they said, this land that we're in right now, i.e. Makkah. And then he asked them, which day do you believe is the most sacred and the most holy? And they said, it's this day that we're in right now. So the Prophet ﷺ then said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ قَدْ حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالَكُمْ وَأَعْرَاضَكُمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا كَحُرْمَةِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا فِي بَلَدِكُمْ هَذَا فِي شَهْرِكُمْ هَذَا He said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the blood of each one of you, the wealth of each one of you, and the honor of each one of you as sacred as this day in this land in this month. And then the Prophet sallallahu asked the Sahaba three times, Allah hal ballaghtu, have I conveyed this message of mine? And the, the Sahaba all said, Allah naam, yes you have. So look at what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said after this. وَيْحَكُمْ لَا تَرْجِعُنَّ بَعْدِي كُفَّارَ يَضْرِبُ بَعْضُكُمْ رِقَابَ بَعْضُ He said, woe to you. After, after I'm gone, don't return to being kuffar, killing one another. My dear respected brothers, I, I, I ask you to look at the situation of our ummah today. What do we see? We see Muslims stealing from other Muslims. 
We see Muslims fellow, uh, we see Muslims trying their best to dishonor their fellow Muslims, trying to throw shame, trying to throw blame, and trying to defame, defame their name. We see Muslims killing other Muslims out of cold blood for no reason. And then we look at the Prophet Sallallahu how much effort he put into uniting this ummah and getting rid of all of this. So now in the absence of the Prophet Sallallahu we should try our best to continue spreading his message and continue, uh, conveying, uh, continue uh, his efforts in uniting this ummah and bringing uh, brotherhood into this ummah. Next, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that shaitan has completely given, hope, given up hope on being worshipped in this land of yours. But he still has hope in the small actions that you belittle. And he will take pleasure in these small actions, meaning the sins that you commit. First of all, let's see, let's look at the truth of the Prophet Sallallahu words. He said this 1400 years ago, and since that day till now, shirk has never re-entered the land of Mecca, or the, the land of Hijaz. How truthful was our Prophet Sallallahu And number two, uh, we can take from this that every action we do, whether it be little or, little or, small, or small, it has significance. And shaitan tries to trap people in this because people don't pay attention to the small sins that they commit and shaitan tries to pull them in with these small sins. And small sins will lead to bigger sins until they accumulate and create mountains of sins. But this goes the other way around as well. It goes for good, good deeds as well. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, Kullu ma'roof in sadaqah. Every good action you do is a sadaqah. So let us try to um, give importance and significance to even the smallest of actions that we, uh, that we do. Next, uh, the Prophet ﷺ could, could have said, or he, he must have had so many more things that he wanted to say, but he left us with one piece of advice. He said, I'm leaving you with something that if you are to hold on to it, then you will never go astray after me. And that, what is that one thing? That one thing is the Kitab of Allah, the Quran. So this shows that everything we could possibly need is in this Quran of ours, uh, and all we need to do is read this Quran and build a connection with it. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave his final piece of advice. He, sa uh, he gave uh, the ticket of Jannah. Five things. He said, He said, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your, your Lord, number one. Number two, pray your five times salah. Number three, fast in Ramadan. Number four, pay your zakat. And number five, obey your leaders and you will enter the, the Jannah of your Lord. My dear respected brothers, after the Prophet ﷺ, uh, finished conveying the speech of his, uh, he, he told the people that were listening that let anyone who heard this uh, speech of mine to convey it to those who are absent. So inshallah, hopefully I was able to do some justice in conveying this message of his and I ask all of you to, and I encourage all of you to go back home and spread this message to your friends and family. My dear respected brothers, uh, I'd like to derive one final lesson from all of this and if there's one thing that you take back from my speech, let this be the one thing that you take back. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the Prophet sallallahu alone in a nation that was completely immersed in tribalism. And this was going on for hundreds of years and there was absolutely no hope for any unity in this nation, meaning the Arabs. But the Prophet Sallallahu had firm intention, he did his part and he put his faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in a span of 23 years, just 23 years was able to do the impossible and unify this entire Arabian Peninsula under the banner of Islam. And what is this other, other than the fulfillment of the, pro, of the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to Ibrahim alayhi salam when he said, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالَ Ibrahim alayhi salam was all alone in the, in the desert with no one to hear his call. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said anyways to him, just call the people and they will come to you. Now we see a hundred thousand people from all over Arabia coming to do hajj and answering the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we have two people, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Both of them started alone with nobody to help them. But they put their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and they put in the effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of the rest. So even us, if we just make firm intention and do our part and then put, uh, leave the rest up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah Allah will take care of all of our needs. May Allah give us all the ability to act upon what has been said. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.